I can understand it perfectly. Heute reden wir über die Mini LF Kamera. Diese Kamera ist klein und leicht und wunderbar. That was very simple, Jeremy. <laughs> so welcome at NAV 2019. I'm at the Ari booth and we're going to take a look at the Ari Alexa Mini LF. It's a Mini LF, right? Or That's the LF correct. Mini? Mini LF. Good. Red Shark's NAB coverage is brought to you by NewTek, G Technology, Blackmagic Design, and Adobe. This is probably the biggest news of NAB this year, I guess. Uh, if you say so, I'll take it. <laughs> so tell me about what you've done with the LF platform and making it smaller, basically, right? Yeah, sure. So when we thought about making a large format camera, we thought about what form factor that should have. And our engineers said it would be really, really difficult to make it in the mini sized form factor. So we first went for the proper Alexa Classic sized camera. But then we realized very quickly we would also need a mini sized version because of the popularity of the Alexa Mini. So the engineers looked at it and they, find, they figured out how to do it. And so now we have a mini sized body. It's almost the same size as the Mini, same attachment points, but with the same sensor as in the proper Alexa LF. What are the key differences between the Mini LF and the normal Mini? The, the key difference is A, we have the large format sensor in there, so that's huge. B, the medium goes on the side here, on the side cover into the media bay, doesn't go on the back anymore. Next, we have on the back here, where the CFast card slot used to be, there's a new row of connectors, and we have two microphones in the front. And, not to forget, excuse me, there is also a new viewfinder. This is the MVF2 viewfinder. Which is a massive difference Which over the old one. hugely difference, yeah. Uh, do you want me to go into detail now? Yes, or? I will, yeah, we'll love Sure, to. Let's, let's go into detail <laughs> on all these bits. So let's first talk about the viewfinder. So new viewfinder, new viewfinder cable. This is a industrial standard called a Co-Express and obviously hot pluggable. And it got caught here, there we go. Oh, somebody threaded it through. So. This is a new viewfinder cable, it's very flexible. It is very robust, tiny little connectors, and it's coaxial, so it's only a pin and a shield. We can carry power, video, audio, and data, control data, over this cable. The cable goes up to 33 feet, so I can take my viewfinder and flip the monitor around, and now use this as a remote control for the camera, up to 33 feet away from the camera. The viewfinder has an eyepiece that's the same as the Aricam eyepiece. That's the best eyepiece we've ever built. So we're using it. It has a heater built in, so a built-in heated eyepiece. It uses a 1920 by 1080 OLED display that is temperature stabilized, so the temperature will not, the color balance of the viewfinder image will not change as the temperature changes. And then we have a flip-out monitor here, which you can operate either like this, so the operator can see the image here or the menu or the home screen or you can flip it around and then the assistant can see it, or I can use it as a remote control. That's nice. The viewfinder also has a little slide-in card here, so the assistants can put their notes here. Yeah. The assistants like to put the minimum ob object distance of the lens there or the name of the characters and the actors. They can put all that right here. And what else do we have? The viewfinder... Somebody's having fun with audio. <laughs> The viewfinder is water resistant, so every wheel here, even the headphones connector here, are water resistant versions. And I think that's it for the viewfinder. So we'll yeah. put the viewfinder back. All right, then we have the side bay here that takes the medium, and I have one of the new medium here. This is the codex capture drive, one terabyte. It goes right in here. And then you can record either MXF Arri Raw or MXF ProRes onto this drive. Now we're switching from QuickTime ProRes to MXF ProRes because MXF is just a better wrapper and everything seems to be going towards MXF. Once the image is recorded, you can put this into a card reader. And the card reader, I can then connect with a USB-C cable to your computer and the drive will just show up as a volume on your desktop. There's no extra software, no license, no VPS, no nothing you need in order to download this drive. There's also an adapter that allows me to put this into an existing SXR capture dock, at which point you get twice the download speed. That's amazing. So this is uh, 8 gigabits per second download speed in the reader and 15 gigabits per second download speed on the adapter. Um, Codex now has another new technology called HDE. It stands for High Density Encoding. 
and this allows you while downloading to encode the array raw and make it 40% smaller. That way... How? That's like magic, right? Well, like, no, no, it's not. It's, it's the same as if you, what you do when you zip a file. Similar thing, you know, you're just taking the air out, you're just taking the air out, but it's bit identical and lossless, so you can reconstitute it later, you can decode it to the proper ARRI RAW file. And a lot of people like to shoot ARRI RAW, but it's a lot of data, so I think this will really help more people to adopt ARRI RAW. Now let's look at the back here. So in the back, as I mentioned, we used to have a CFAST card slot. We took that out, put it, put the Codex Capture Drive slot on the left. I'm sorry, Compact Drive slot on the left. And now we have extra space here. Part of this extra space we use for a larger cooling channel inside the camera. We also have larger fans in there because it's a lot more data, so a lot more heat. But we can cool that, it all works properly. And then we have a couple new connectors here. We have an improved audio connector. This is a six pin now. The sixth pin allows us to output 12 volts so we can power a preamp or a wireless audio receiver. There's a dedicated regulated 12 volt accessory power output dedicated, regulated, 24 volt accessory power output. And here's a new sync in. It takes a Genlock sync signal if you want to sync this camera to something external from it, like a rear screen projector, for instance. It's like just a, a really great evolution. Like I know like on the imaging side, you're now going to a lot, a, a larger sensor. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that all these little changes will make a huge difference in, a, in an actual production. Yes, I think, I think it does. And we listened to a lot of the feedback we got from the mini operators. And we improved, we incorporated all of those, that feedback into this camera here. Yeah. However, that said, I think there's still some things the Mini does that this doesn't do. You know, the Mini goes 200 frames a second. The Mini has the look library built in. Those are things that this camera doesn't have because we just couldn't fit it in. So I think there's still a place for the Mini out there. And do you think that, what, what, why is this now so already such a popular camera? Because it is, right? I, I, oh, it's hugely popular. It's hugely popular. We just have been. Yeah, it's been a crowd here all day. Um, I, I think we, we hit a sweet spot. I think people want large format. Large format just looks better. Any DP who's shot anything in large format wants to shoot the next show also in large format. But the Alexa LF is a bigger camera. It uses a lot more power, so it's not as easy to use. I think this is smaller, lighter. By the way, it's a 12 volt camera, so you can use all existing onboard batteries. Um, and I also think of the price point. We hit a very, very happy price point. In fact, a lot of the people who've ordered the camera already are owner operators, more so than we actually thought would happen. Which is like weird for such a, a kind of a premium uh, camera, right? It like, is. It's still a premium camera. It's a premium camera. I mean, the camera with the mechanical accessories and two drives and the viewfinder is about $75,000. That's a sizable chunk of money. That's a big investment. But I think what happened is a lot of people saw that their friends made a lot of money buying a Mini. And so now they want to get in on it and they're seeing large format as the big thing. Now, large format in a Mini-sized body, I'm going to go buy this camera.